Oh, that was so good. Yeah, it tastes yummy. Good morning, John. Good morning, Sean. How are you? I'm doing well for a Monday morning. <laughs> yeah. Kids are all off to school. I've got my coffee. I've got my day organized. So I'm off to a good start. I was kind of expecting to see the, uh, the Ryan Reynolds outfit again. <laughs> <laughs> that was good, man. That was pretty funny. <laughs> Am I, uh, we went and watched that movie like I don't know, two weeks ago or so. And uh, afterwards, I I looked up something and then you could buy the outfit. I'm like, are you kidding me right now? So I'm like, that would be hilarious. So I went ahead and did it and bought it and it ended up turning out pretty funny. It's pretty, pretty good. But you could buy it directly from him. He has a, a site where you can actually buy that outfit. Oh, it's too funny. Well, look at that. And you already got your Halloween costume. Exactly. Exactly. My wife's going to go as his the, the his wife. Uh, what's the girl's name? Uh, Blay, Blay, Blair? No, what's her name? Oh, Blake Lively? Blake, Blake Lively. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, how was your weekend? Good, good. Uh, just did some open houses. Kind of slow, actually, though. Really? Yeah, yeah. Interesting. I have seen a little tick up in uh, in inventory, just a little one. 
Yeah. Yeah, I looked the other day, I think we were at like 7,700 houses active. Yeah. Which is still pretty light. Yeah. No, it, it's about 300,000 light, right? Or 3,000 light, right? Was it like 10 and 12? Is there where it's supposed to be or? Yeah, for some reason I was thinking 13. I was trying to remember what, what last year was or the year before that. And I think I, I feel like it was always around like 13 to 15. But oh, no, I, might, I might be off. Let's see what it said real fast. I was looking at an article. Let's see what it says. Uh... Oh, and just so I don't have to do a separate message to you, uh, do we have any, any, uh, estimated time on how long it's going to take the underwriter to go through that that pre yeah that should be that should have been done over the weekend i'm, I'm waiting on pins and needles to get that back today oh okay cool cool yeah and there's a lot of moving parts there i know there's some a few items we needed i think they came in over the weekend um it was, as long as nothing else is needed because he has so many properties um so with each property he has to have a mortgage statement i need the hoa statement i need the insurance statement like to really fine tune to get exact numbers for all of the costs um and then he has eight of them so there's a lot of different documents that he has to put together yeah uh, and then make sure his his tax returns all the all the schedules and everything are in it so there's just a lot of moving pieces uh gloria is the one that is really trying to push everything so we're using her to kind of be the the um what do you call it uh, what is that blow what is that horn that you blow the the, the conch shell yeah they, yeah <laughs> just to get everyone going oh Dude, I, I saw oh <laughs> totally change, totally changing gears here but I, I saw this video it was funny man um they were on a beach and this guy put a conch shell out on the beach yeah and they put a two-way a two-way radio in there or whatever and uh, he waited for some guy to pick it up. And he's like, hi, I've been trying to get a hold of you about your car's extended warranty. <laughs> That's awesome. Oh, uh, it was good. That is good. That is really good. <laughs> I love those, the, the, the ones that were whispering with the horse in the person's ear or something like that. <laughs> but it's unbelievable. I get like two calls a, a day on that, on some car warranty stuff. I mean, it's just unbelievable. Yeah, it's crazy. But... It is what it is, I guess. And guess what? I have one. I have an extended warranty on two of my cars. <laughs> so I don't know if it's real or not. Well, I, I like hearing it from uh, from people who are like, I don't even have a car. Yeah. <laughs> like, I don't even I don't even drive. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty funny. Yeah, we've got my son has a older truck that we got an extended warranty on. And then my wife has her car and we bought the uh, extended warranty from the factory and then my car actually has an extended warranty but it's still under the normal warranty so they do pay for themselves because i swear there's gremlins built inside the technology of these cars that is one mile past the warranty like out they like release the crack into the engine or something because it's always like right after the warranty's over like hell breaks loose it's unbelievable yeah, i wouldn't be surprised it was like what they came out with the uh, the iphone yeah like the iphone 4 or something like that where, where they were intentionally draining the battery yeah yeah i mean who knows right i mean in this in this day and age who knows man <laughs> yeah i don't know what to believe anymore i just hunker down and just kind of do my own thing and just treat people well and do the right thing and then hope for the best at this point in life yeah. good morning sean Good morning, Valerie. How are you? I'm good. I'm just sending you business right and left. I like it. I'll take it. I know. You know, when you when a person sends your son, daughter, and sister to you, there's and did the refi personally with you. Yeah. You know, you must be doing something right. Well, I appreciate it very much <laughs> for that. But we do have yours, um, your pre qualification updated. Um, we added everyone together, so I'll, I'll have to give you a call later on today to kind of go over that. For who? For you and uh, your son and his friend. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, got that one. Uh, okay, no worries. But, uh, yeah, how was your weekend? Worked like a dog. Yeah. All weekend. Crazy. I think crazy, you know, crazy. 
in the last two or three weeks, I've heard more people wanting to buy second homes in Flagstaff than I ever have. I mean, I probably have like 12 people asking me questions about it. It's like, well, um, dang, I wish I, anyone who's asking you questions about Prescott, you, you send them my way, but Flagstaff's out, out of the way. <laughs> but it's unbelievable the amount of people that are in that mode for like, I don't know, set getaways or, or, uh, second homes or thinking about the holidays and I don't know it's just interesting but um yeah we'll see what the markets what the markets continue to do but uh it's busy that's for sure it's definitely busy do you guys see a lot of uh a lot of people from California right now buying second homes in Prescott area uh not personally, uh, mostly more from Phoenix, I think, coming up. Yeah, that seems like, well, just personally, but not to say that's not happening. Sure. All right, let's see uh, here. We have, uh, we just have two people on the call right now? No, participants, 15, here we go. There we go, all right. Now I can see what's going on here. I think I have a different view on gallery. There's everybody, all right. All right, so um, it's nine o'clock and I'll give it a couple minutes before we jump in. There's a lot of really fun, exciting stuff to go over today. Um, one of the things I'm going to be focusing on today is kind of what you need to know about VA loans um, with the amount of veterans that are coming back from being overseas. Um, we are seeing a pretty big increase in the amount of VA pre-approvals that we're doing. So I'll kind of go over some VA hot, hot buttons, so to speak. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and start sharing my screen. You know what? It's, I got a couple more minutes. It is Monday. So let's, let's wait a little bit here. For those of you that don't know, um, I love fishing. So behind me, you'll see a Wahoo. Uh, you can't really tell, but that's about six feet long. And, uh, I love deep sea fishing. So. I have a, a marlin and a rooster fish being mounted that's going to be coming here shortly. So that should be fun to, to show off as well. But uh, let's go ahead and get started. Um, I'm going to go ahead and share my screen to kind of show you what the markets are doing real quick. So bear with me one moment. Let me pull this down. Love you. Be careful. Yep. I'll call you. Because I, I have some instructions. Yes. God bless you. All right. Oh. Hey, you could wash your dog. Stop share. All right. I'm having a tough time sharing today for some reason. Let me try this again. Share screen. Screen three, share, and all right, there we go. All right, so I assume everyone can see my screen. Um, let's go ahead this up. Don't try and wash the dogs yourself. I'll help you later, but we have to do it. All right, if you haven't already done so, make sure you guys mute yourself. Um, I'll, I can mute you from here too if you if you forget. But all right, well, welcome to the Woolen Mortgage Team's Monday morning mortgage message. Um, I'm gonna kind of go over what interest rates are doing right now. It's actually a big day tomorrow. Uh, we're gonna have a consumer price index that's gonna be announced. Um, inflation has been the key um, question mark, I guess you can say. Uh, there really is a battle between the wits um, to see what is truly going on with markets uh, right now. There is, obviously, we know the supply chain uh, has been an issue. We all hear about the issue with um, the microchips in the different products. Uh, I was just in California to, uh, last weekend, and there are literally lines of container ships still out waiting to, to unload their, 
their um, their products. And uh, if any of you are ordering something, whether it's appliances or whether it's something unique that comes from overseas, you know the pains associated with that. Well, that does cause inflationary pressures. So we want to really watch that carefully. Uh, so there's a really battle between is this transitory or is this what's called sticky inflation? Uh, the numbers aren't pretty for inflation. Um, the last consumer price index, the headline inflation report was 8.3%, which is the highest it's ever been uh, since like the 70s. So that's not a good sign. Um, if you strip out all of the, um, some of the more transitory items, uh, the core rate of inflation was about 6.7%. So keep in mind, inflation is the enemy of interest rates, but there is this, this idea that it's transitory. I mean, it's, it's gonna go away soon. The problem is that may last longer than they thought. So there's a battle in the markets right now between that and it's kind of keeping it in a, a close, a small range of trading. So we'll kind of watch, I'll show you what that looks like uh, in just a second here. But today we're up 11 basis points, which is good. Um, I, I pulled this chart to show you what mortgage-backed securities are doing over the last uh, year and a half since last December. That's when the mortgage bonds were at their peak and that's when rates were at their lowest. So, and then you saw kind of the drop all the way down here where rates kind of reached their highest point uh, back in March of this year. They were, uh, they spiked, I guess you can say the best word for it. And we're slowly seeing a gradual kind of drift back upwards as we see the rate of COVID continuing uh, with the variant, with the kind of the back and forth with the vaccine mandates. And is there gonna be a lockdown? Is there not gonna be a lockdown? So the recovery is a lot slower, which is kind of dragging out the rate of inflation to a longer period of time as well. So we really wanna keep a good close eye on what's happening here. I'll show you a shorter term here as far as what's happening with the markets now. Um, this was Friday. So Friday, we saw a pretty big drop of 30 basis points in the bond market. Um, so we locked up most of our loans up here, kind of at our peak. But right now, today, we're, we're showing signs of being better. So um, we're bouncing around this floor. It's really uncanny if you watch these levels of, uh, they're called levels of resistance. Like right here, we, boun we bounced off this line, we bounced off this line, and it kind of ranges in between these lines. So I can predict really well when to lock interest rates. So we bounced off this floor right here. We're heading back upwards. Most likely what's going to happen is we're going to hit this and then we're going to bounce back down. So we're going to gain about 20 to 15 basis points in cost on rates and then lock our customers up here most likely. Um, but if you can see this narrow trade right here, we're being squeezed in here. Um, this is going to cause what's called a springboard effect. So when it's tightly bound like this, you can see these big jumps happen. So I'm really going to be careful tomorrow because the consumer price index comes out tomorrow. If inflation is hotter than normal, I'm most likely going to lock all of our loans because we could drop to this floor right here, which we hit here and we hit down here. We could drop here and lose about 40 basis points, which is almost about a half discount point loss in cost on rates. So Tomorrow's going to be a big day, but um, here's what the averages are right now nationwide for interest rates. We're still really, really good, guys. I mean, really good. Uh, the 30-year average right now is 2.94% on a 30-year fixed. Uh, the 15-year is at 2.38. The FHA is at 2.62. VA right around the 2.62 as well. And Jumbo is at 3.125. And that's the average nation, nationwide on a zero points loan. So we're still in really good shape, guys. So when I'm talking infl inflationary, um, it's not like we're going to jump to 4% overnight. It's just not going to happen. We may go into the lower threes, um, but if we continue to see the economy getting strengthened faster than normal, if we see the decrease in COVID numbers, if we see the increase in opening up of the markets internationally and domestically, uh, we, we will see rates get higher. Good news in the markets is always bad news for interest rates. So just keep that in mind because um, if you look back really further on, this, on these charts, see if it'll update quickly. Um, we're way up here. The bond market in a good environment is way down here. 
So that's where rates were in the fours. So we're still way above normal in this trading pattern. Uh, this mess back here, that was when COVID hit. That's when I almost lost my mind <laughs> with interest rates bouncing all over, the, all over the place. It was a scary time for everybody. But um, that's when the government started buying mortgage-backed securities. And again, they're going to slow that down, which means rates should increase over time. So if you, anyone's on the fence, you got to tell them, get off the fence. So we have consumer price index happening tomorrow. Um, and that's going to be a big impact on rates. We'll see really what that does. Um, so that's a quick real, little rate update for you. Uh, they're still really, 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 really good. So great time to refinance. Uh, so if you, anyone's thinking about re refinance or have any customers that are looking to refinance, now is a great time. So some big changes I want to announce for you real quick. This really doesn't affect the uh, luxury market very much. Um, it may, but uh, for the most part, it's conventional loans on the Fannie Mae side. Fannie Mae has now announced, now this is a huge change, guys. I mean, this is massive. They announced that they are going to average credit scores between the buyer, a co-borrower and a borrower for qualification purposes. So what that means is before anyone with a 620 credit score on a conventional loan for Fannie Mae was not able to be on the mortgage at all. So now that is going to be averaged. So when you are going to be looking at somebody with a 550 credit score that may have the, a lot of the income and somebody with a 650 credit score, we now average those credit scores for qualifications. So it's gonna be really, really great for adding income to qualify. And that's gonna be really helpful in qualifying those people that may have had some blips on their credit. So essentially what that means is here's a, a snapshot of what, what kind of what that looks like. So let's just say somebody had a 619 credit score and the borrower had the other borrower has a 693 credit score. That now is going to be blended into a 656 credit score for qualifying. Before that person couldn't be on the loan at all. So this is a major change to Fannie Mae. Um, so if anyone was out there that had low credit score, they couldn't be on the loan, typically we would have to remove them completely and they wouldn't qualify for really the home that they were looking for. But Fannie Mae has just announced that they're going to be averaging those scores for qualification purposes. So that's going to bring another wave, so to speak, of potential buyers to the fold for uh, potential customers of yours to buy homes. So it's the, one of the biggest changes I've seen in credit qualifying in a long time. So John, is that effective immediately? Is there a date to that? Yep, September 15th and five days that goes into effect. Now the credit scores are still gonna dict the, um, have an impact on the interest rate, but not on qualifying. So that person with the 550 credit score can now be on the loan on a conventional Fannie Mae loan, which is unheard of. Usually 620 was a cutoff, it was black and white. You just can't be on the loan. Um, nothing can be used. Income can't be used. Nothing can be used. Now we can add them to it, use that income to qualify, and then average those scores. So the way it works, remember, was that there's three scores for each person. The highest and the lowest is dropped off, and you're left with that middle score for each borrower. And now those two middle scores are average. Whereas before, we always took the lower of the credit score, um, or we had to remove that person completely. Now it's average for qualification purposes. So it's a big change, a really big change. And this is gonna help quite a few people get into homes, but right now it's only on the Fannie Mae loans. Um, the industry kind of follows suit. One, one entity typically does it and then the rest kind of follow suit. So we'll really see what happens as we move forward. But that's one of the biggest changes I've seen in a long time. So it's kind of exciting. Any questions on that? All right, so um, as troops come home, come home as we uh, end wars and do whatever the different things, a lot of the VA people are starting to, um, there's a lot more VA applications than normal right now. Let's just say that. So I wanted to get into VA real fast and uh, kind of show you just some basics and some secrets of VA that you may not know. So first off, I wanna make sure everyone understands that VA loans, there's zero credit score requirements zero credit score requirements. So FHA and VA don't have any credit score requirements built into their guidelines. They don't. So what that means is if a lender 
tells a buyer that they don't have the credits qualified, that means they created their own guideline for that lending entity. And uh, that means just that mortgage company can't qualify them, but we could because we don't have any overlays. There is no credit score requirement for VA. So just keep that in mind. You do have to be eligible. So you have to have served for at least four years in the military of some one of, one of the branches of the military, uh, but it's 100% financing. And this was a recent change. It's 100% financing with no limit. So that used to be capped at conventional, which is 548, 250 right now. Now there is zero limit. So you could do a $2 million zero down jumbo purchase on a VA loan with no monthly mortgage insurance. It's unbelievable. Um, now, once you get over a certain loan threshold, which was 548, 250, it does become a jumbo VA, but it's still zero down. So I'm not sure if you knew that, but it's a great, great tool for those people that are in the jumbo or luxury arena that are veterans that may not have thought they could use it because the rates are much better. And I'll go over that in a second. The rates are very good for a VA loan compared to a conventional loan. And remember, there's no monthly mortgage insurance, but there is a VA funding fee. So first time use, it's kind of expensive, but it's rolled into the loan, it's not out of pocket. So that could be 3.3% down to 1.2%, depending on how many times they've used their VA benefit. And um, also how much they're putting down. You could put down more to make that VA funding fee less. Um, if they are a disabled veteran, the VA funding fee is waived. So there's no mortgage insurance, there's no funding fee, and it's zero down. It's a great loan. Um, there's also one of the misconceptions out there right now is that sellers have to do something different or pay extra uh, on VA loans. Um, that's not true. It used to be true. That is not true anymore. So VA loans, there is no extra obligations that a seller has to accept a VA offer when it comes to fees. So keep, keep that in mind. It's an important piece of the puzzle. Um, now, VA loans are only for primary residences. However, you can have multiple VA loans. An example, if somebody has a VA loan, they got into the first house, it's a $350,000 home, they use $350,000, you can utilize that again up to a $548,250, that's the limit now, total use of those funds. So they have an extra 200 and so, 200 or so thousand dollars available to use towards VA. And anything above that that they need, all they need to bring is 25% of that difference. So you can have multiple VA loans at the same time. A lot of people don't know that. So you can rent one property out and upgrade and still use your VA benefit for that. So didn't know if you knew that, but it's definitely something you can do. Also, if you have a second home or an investment property, you can use a VA loan to refinance those second and investment properties. Um, also, you can buy a four unit investment property, you live in one of them and do it zero down. It's huge. So if you have any veterans that are savvy, that are in uh, investment savvy, that really wanna get into real estate uh, investing, a four unit is a primary residence with zero down and no monthly mortgage insurance is a pretty good cash flow um, strategy. So I would, if you know any veterans out there, shoot an email out to your customer database, whatever it may be, say, hey, did you know you can buy investment properties uh, or four unit as a primary and rent the others out and actually do it with zero down? Uh, a lot of them maybe don't know that. Uh, so very, very cool. Also, um, VA loans are much different in qualifying, much different. We do not use debt to income ratios at all when qualifying a VA lender, a VA borrower. It's all based on what's called residual income. So residual income basically is after all bills are paid, how much do you have left over? And as long as there's a specific amount left, um, for example, in the Southwest, if it's a family of one, all you need is $491 left over after your monthly obligations are met to qualify. So I've seen people qualify for a VA loan with like a 75 debt to income ratio like really high um, because they have two or three thousand dollars left over after all the bills are paid to manage the overall debts. And um, it's a great loan. It's actually the lowest default loan of all loans. 
regardless of how they qualify. But uh, if you ever hear a bank saying, sorry, we can't do their loan because their debt to income ratio is too high on a VA loan, they're lying. Or they have an overlay <laughs> because there is no DTI factor within a VA loan. So just keep that in mind. It's actually very easy to qualify for a VA loan. Um, so if you have a veteran offer, a VA offer as a seller, um, don't be afraid of it. The only thing you need to be really weary of is the, the VA appraisal because the VA appraiser is actually a staff appraisal by the Veterans Association. Um, they are a little unique. They are, um, what's the best word for it? They beat to their own drum. It's the same qualifications, the same standards that are used for comps and et cetera, but they have 10 business days from the time they accept the job to do the job, to get the job done. And they will point out things that are um, related to these structures um, overall, um, I guess, the, uh, the, the quality of the construction, um, the, the shape that it's in, if the roof's got issues, they will point that out. If there's older than, you know, in the, it's in the 70s and there's peeling paint, the lead-based paint, those things do come up very similar to FHA. But if it's a clean property, it's not going to be. It's not going to be any different on a VA appraisal than a traditional conventional appraisal would be. So we just have to deal with the turn times and them beating their own drum as far as how fast they get it back to us. And you can't rush a VA appraisal. Um, condos, condos with VA are um, a pain in the rear end because there is there's their own VA approved condo list. So I'm going to copy this and put this in the actual chat room right now. Uh, so if I can pull up the chat and I'm gonna paste this in there. This is the link to the report where you can find out if their condo is VA approved or not. It's very similar to FHA. So you have to look to see if a condo is approved if, unless you get a VA, to get a VA loan on it. There's no spot approvals. It has to go directly to the VA for the whole project. So it's very important if you have a listing and if you throw VA as an option on a condo, Make sure you check first to make sure it's a VA approved, very VA approved property. Um, and this could bite you in the rear end if you don't check that. Um, now, also one of the big difference with VA, and this is for more of those outer edge areas of the town, um, sometimes closer to town, but manufactured homes, you can do a one, uh, uh, a single wide with a VA loan and it can be moved. No other loan product allows the manufactured home to be moved from its original location, except for a VA loan. Uh, it does need an engineer cert to make sure everything's been you know, secured properly and the, the dwelling is in good shape and it hasn't been altered as far as the integrity of the, of the structure in the move, um, but it is the only one that would allow that. So keep that in mind if you have listings that are uh, single wides uh, out in the outer edges of town or uh, wherever it may be. Hey, Sean. Yes. Even if it has a land lease with it? Land leases, the lease has to last as long as the term of the mortgage. Gotcha. So if the land is leased and it's a 30-year mortgage, the land lease has to have at least 31 years or more term left on it. And then obviously you have to take the payment in that in consideration for the total payment and qualifying. Uh, but that's the overall rule. Right, but good question. Um, so I want to show you guys what it looks like or what the, if I can open this real fast, what it looks like to do a zero, zero down. And I'm going to have to move this screen sharing thing. Hold on one second here. Da, da, da. Zero down and zero closing cost VA purchase without asking the sellers to pay for things. So let me see if I can move this. Hold on. I'm going to have to unshare this real fast and then move this. And then I'll share again. All right, so I don't know if anyone's ever seen a rate sheet, like kind of what they look like um, and how rates work, but this is on a VA loan. Can you everyone see that? Um, I see, I can, I can hear you because you're muted, but I assume everyone can see that. If not, speak up. But this is a rate sheet. And on this rate sheet, these are the rates. And this is the cost over here. If somebody came to me today and said, I want a zero point VA loan, 
2.625 would be almost close to what's called 100 or par. So this is the closest to no points. We can go upwards to 3.24 and give them the overage, which is 1.45%. We can give this to them as a percentage of the loan amount. So on a, let's just say $100,000 loan, this would be $1,450. On a $500,000 loan, this would be close to $7,500 that we give them towards paying all closing costs. So if you have a veteran that has no money and you don't wanna ask the sellers for any funds, you can push the rate up a little bit and get a big lender credit to pay for all of the closing costs. Now, obviously it's a percentage of the loan amount. So in the lower loan amounts, you may not be able to cover all of it, but as you get higher in purchase price, you can get a substantial amount. So like at 2.99, we're giving 1%. So if it's a $500,000 purchase, zero down, you're getting $5,000 in lender credit towards paying those closing costs. And this is how rates work. You can go lower and pay money to get a lower rate, or you can get higher and get money to pay for closing costs. So you can literally do a VA purchase with zero down and zero out of pocket. We have people coming in, they put a you know, $3,000 earnest money deposit down, and they actually at closing get their earnest money back because we're paying all their closing costs. So it's a great way to strategize with your veterans on how to purchase a home with literally zero out of pocket. We do not have to rely on the sellers to pay closing costs. I want you guys to understand that piece of it. So that's really kind of an overview of pricing there. Um, any questions on VA or do you guys have anything? Um, have you heard anything out there that scares you on VA that maybe I could answer any questions on regarding VA loans? Don't be shy, go ahead and unmute yourself and, and reach out. Sean, I had one real quick. Sure. Um, I had heard that a, a VA loan is assumable if it is another VA, um, someone had the VA benefits. That is correct. They do have to qualify through the same process and you really have to see if it makes sense. So back 10 years ago, 15, maybe 20 years ago, actually, when rates were in the 10, 11, 12% um, and pushing towards 17, it was very, I guess, sexy to advertise, you can assume this property with a VA and get a rate of 10% when rates currently at the time were 17. Um, when rates right now are really low, it may or may not make sense to do that because you still have to qualify. Um, it's not just a take it over and here you go type of a, a process. You do still have to qualify it through the normal process, but the terms are transferable. So yes, it could be a potentially a good opportunity for somebody, uh, but if rates are lower now than the rate of what that assumable loan is, then it's better off getting a new loan, if that makes sense. John, I have a question. Yeah. Um, yeah. So uh, in regards to condition of a property, comparing a VA loan to FHA loan, is FHA about the same when it comes to, say, peeling paint or anything like that? Yes. Yeah, and anything before that 1978 piece where the, you know, the, the whole lead-based paint and other factors come in with regards to building quality and standards um, would come into play. And safety but, issues, safety and health I'm talking issues. about like, you know, yeah, something that was built in the 80s, let's just say, but there's, yeah. uh, you know, maybe the, the, the fascia has a little bit of peeling paint or something. If it's a little bit of peeling paint, it's not, you don't have any risks of it being lead-based paint. It shouldn't be a problem. Um, oh, so is it really just the lead base that's really the issue or is it, is it? That's one of the main issues. With oh, your, okay. Yeah. If it's just some small cosmetic items. Now, if there's really bad dry rot, um, it really just depends on what's noted out in the appraisal. So mm. if you have any question marks and you have some really light issues with fascia board, with peeling, just take some paint before the appraisal goes out there. Just touch it. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but if it's major issues, it probably will be pointed out in the appraisal. Um, okay. if there's, um, it's more of a collateral issue because the FHA and VA is a little bit more strict on the standard of how that house looks compared to a conventional lend lender. Mm. Uh, so if there's, and it's, it's mainly about value. If there's going to be, if they have to take the property back and they have to redo all of the fascia boards and all of the, uh, if there's wood to earth contact and there's, you know, dry rot, they, they don't want to have to mess with that. So they'll just point it out in the appraisal and say, hey, remedy this. Uh -huh. um, so, if, but if it's, 
if it's just normal wear and tear, <clears throat> shouldn't be a problem. Things okay. we want to look out for, cracked windows, broken windows, exposed wiring, um, a, you know, a stove missing, that kind of stuff. Um, for the most oh, part- that's right. Stage, it has to have a stove. Does, it has to have some kind of a range. Yeah, it right. It has to have a range. Exactly. It has to have a sink that works. Um, pool pumps have to be working, that type of stuff. But uh, very similar to FHA. Okay. Yes, yeah. Sean? Yes, sir. Um, piggybacking off the previous question on refinancing, is it the same or is it basically a cash out refinance situation for a VA loan, an existing VA loan? So if you have an existing VA loan, the refinance profit process is incredibly easy. Um, it's called a streamline or EARL um, interest rate reduction loan. There's no income needed, no appraisal needed. It's all, it's, it's literally just, what's your loan? Yes, here's a lower rate. And you can redo the entire loan with very little at all. Uh, that's an interest rate reduction loan. So VA refinances are probably the most simple process you could ever go through. Thank so you. It's a huge, huge difference, huge difference. Now, if there's a conventional loan and you wanna to go to a VA loan, uh, you would have to get an appraisal and go through the whole process. But if it's already a VA loan, it's a really simple process. Thanks. Yeah, not a problem. John, could you walk through real quick? Um, so a buyer, a VA owns a home in Queen Creek, has realized incredible appreciation, like to get a second home in, in uh, um, up like in Pine Top. So what's the conversation to get them going to keep them in the VA loan and let them understand? So many people feel like it's, they've only had the VA loan once, they've used expired their benefits, they can't do it again. Got it. So keep in mind, it can only be used when you're purchasing, it can only be used as a primary residence. Um, so if you wanted to, <clears throat> excuse me, um, depending on how much eligibility they have left, they could maximize their eligibility and cash out as much as they can on their property up to 100% of the house's worth. So yeah, you can do 100% cash out refinance on a VA loan, use that money to buy that property up in Pine Top or whatever it may be. So I guess it just depends on their um, equity position, but you can definitely use it in that fashion. You couldn't use a VA to buy a secondary home or a vacation home. Um, you couldn't use the VA to have a new VA loan on that property up in Pine Top. Does that answer your question? Yes, thank now, you. Now, if they, let's just say they're relocating, you could use whatever was remaining in that. So let's just say that they had a loan amount of 200,000 on the house down here. They're relocating to Pine Top for, for work or for the primary residence. Um, there's $348,000 left because we can go 100% financing <clears throat> with multiple, excuse me, <clears throat> In my throat. We can go up to five hundred forty-eight thousand in combined loans when there's multiple loans. So if you have two hundred thousand used up, there's three hundred forty-eight thousand left. We can use that towards a secondary home, and then whatever the difference is, let's use easy numbers. Let's just say it's a five forty-eight purchase price. And you have three forty-eight VA eligibility. There's a two hundred thousand dollar gap. VA will fund seventy-five percent of that difference. The borrowers only need 25% of that delta or that 200,000. So they can get in with $50,000 down on a new VA loan with no mortgage insurance. And it's a great way of bridging that gap to that next property. Hopefully that made sense to you guys. Thank you. You got it. Any other questions regarding VA home loans? All right, well, I guess I did my part then. Um, VA is a pretty good loan. It's one of my favorite loans. And um, if you do have any questions or any customers that may need any assistance, let me know. Um, if there's no further questions, I'll stay on for the next um, 10 or so minutes if you guys wanna hang out and answer any questions that you may have. Um, otherwise, um, use this information to your best, not to your, to your um, benefit and go Ability. out there and have a, what's that? Best ability. There you go. I, I ran out of coffee, so I need to add a little bit more to that. But uh, yeah, get your best abilities. Go out there and have a great week. And if you do need anything, feel free to give me a call. I'm always here. Hey, Sean. So I had to take a call at the very beginning of your um, your 
spiel, your webinar. And uh, I missed the exciting news. <laughs> I was like, oh, okay. in. that's really exciting. I'm like, whoa, 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 what? Got it. So essentially, uh, in a nutshell, Fannie Mae has changed the way they're allowing people to qualify for a mortgage. Before you needed a minimum 620 credit score to qualify, period. So if you had a 619, you couldn't be on the loan at all. You couldn't use your income. You couldn't use anything. Now, if one party at the, to the transaction, like let's just say the husband has a 550 and the, credit, and the wife has the 800, now we average the co those credit scores to qualify. So now the qualifying factor may be 710, whereas before that person couldn't be on the loan at all. We couldn't use their income or anything. Oh, now, they, now you can blend those and mm. use that for qualifying purposes, which is the first time this has ever been done. Wow. So okay. Very unique. It's a new, it's a brand new guideline. It's starting out on the 18th that will go into effect. Um, it's just a great new way to help people um, qualify. Whereas before, maybe they could qualify for 500,000 instead of a million because we couldn't use one of their incomes. Now you can use all of their income, blend those credit scores for qualification purposes and move forward. So it's a great new change. And I think it can help a lot of people. Okay, got it. Thank you. Yeah, you got it. Appreciate it. All righty. I'm going to sign off. Take care. See you next time. Yep. We'll see you soon. Have a good one. All right. Any other questions out there? Yep. Here's a chat. There's a question in here. How does it work with refi? Oh, that was John. Okay. John, you're welcome. Have a wonderful week. And uh, all right, guys. Well, enjoy your week and uh, we will be in touch. I'll stick around for any questions if you have them. All right, guys, have an awesome week and we'll talk to you guys soon. See ya.